Okay, very good. So Ashley, Sarah, and Khadija, did I get all that right? Yes. Very yes. good, very good. Well, uh, Ashley, uh, we'll start with you. Um, nice you, to see you again. <laughs> it is nice, welcome back. It's it's good hey, to thanks. see you too. It is good to see you too. Um, so you're you're up there, you know, I, we, we saw the picture, we saw the show, but, but the picture, I think really, the, the still picture of you at the piano, just the spotlight on you, it's, uh, yeah, what, what, so, so one might wonder, does that spotlight equate to pressure on you when it comes to this show and, and, and what you felt going into this production? Yeah, 100%. I think um, when I first started the process of rehearsing and even the, the research before rehearsals, I definitely battled with a little bit of imposter syndrome just because everyone or most people know Carol King and have an idea of how she sounds and how she sings these songs and how she acts and her mannerisms. She's very well known. And so that can be a little bit like a, okay, I'm sweating a little bit. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, going through the rehearsal process and just working with our director, Jaquez, I really had a lot of self-trust in myself in terms of reminding myself that he cast me for a reason and there are parts of me that i can bring to carol um as well but yeah the pressure definitely on but <laughs> it's good yeah. now sarah uh, you, you know you get to play cynthia and and the, and the love story between her and, and barry mann it was a great love story i mean obviously they they never separated they were together forever uh and and you know so so talk to me about you know coming in and and when you what approach did you take to this role knowing um that, that who you be playing that's a great question um i think that cynthia is we have a lot of similarities, but the way we are different is that she comes into a room and she knows what she wants. She knows how she's going to get it. Um, and she does a very similar thing with Barry. She meets him and almost instantly they're connected and she knows that that's kind of where she wants to um, explore. But I think that coming in, it's really hard to find that immediately. I think it took me and also my amazing stage partner, Matt. <laughs> um, it took us a minute to like get to know our characters first and then connect as those people. Um, we're friends outside of that, which really helps. Um, but yeah, it took it took a second to like, I needed to get to know Cynthia first. And then we were able to kind of develop an on-stage relationship and rehearsal, which was really, really awesome experience. In the show, Carol King plays "Will You Still Love Me," and 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 that version, you, we 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 heard it, and we're like, oh my gosh! It's, yeah, this was almost like Jersey Boys here at the Riverside earlier in the year. This was another one of those shows. It's like, wow, they did that one too. That's amazing. And so when we heard that, Khadija, your your character said, "That's a great song," but but you know, we're a black group, and this song sounds like a country western song to you. And and, and so that that stood out to me um, because this. Was a, this was a this was a time where the producers controlled a lot of what we heard, uh, and I, I, I'm not saying I was a lot in 1960, but <laughs> as you were, it was very controlled. And and yet your character put her foot down and said, "Listen, we'll do your song, but." So uh, you know, this is kind of I think it's I think it's really cool. I get to talk to the powerhouse women cast here, but for you that was a power move for your character. What do you think about that? Um, well, I was doing some research on that because I actually thought the same thing. Um, but I feel like um, the Shirelles were um, already, um, they were in high school when they first started. And it wasn't that long after that. I think it was maybe like three years when they finally got the hit song, Will You Should Still Love Me Tomorrow? But I think by that time they had merged a great relationship with their manager. And um, he, he was a little hesitant, if I remember correctly, about the, her pushing back with the song. 
but it was also the civil rights movement um, activity happening. And I think that um, they had done a little something, but they were really pushing for like a number one hit as well as Carol and Jerry at the time. And also Donnie, you know, they all needed at that particular moment, something to explode to kind of catapult their careers to the next level. And so I think that it was probably the energy of the world at that time that, um, this is my mind, that caused her to say, you know what, um, I do want to do this, but I would love for this to be a representation of your music, your lyrics, but also a representation of us possibly being the first black girl group to get on this billboard, which is exactly what happened. They were the first, black girl group through that song um to get a long lasting stint on the billboard charts so i just feel like all of those emotions together kind of just came together and she she's she's a um she's a character that just had the courage to do it because it took an, an immense amount of courage especially in that time when you know there was just a lot of yeah okay we'll take we'll take it um she was like no so i think she had a lot of strength and i really ad admire her for that so this production comes at you so fast there are costume changes and set changes and and and, chor and choreography that just it, it just there's something happening on this stage at all time even when there's not <laughs> so look it looks like something you could see something happening and there's energy on this stage so when you compare this show to maybe some others that you've done when you're telling audiences about it and you're saying you know you you can't miss this show what is it about this show that that really strikes you and I, i'll throw that out to all three of you and you i mean wh whoever wants to go first can go I can go first if no one has anything. Um, yeah, I think one of the, the main things about this show for me is that one of the special things, the many special things about Carol King is that she is incredibly relatable. Um, and I think that there is something for everyone in this show. Um, just because Carol spans such a wide audience, I, I just think everyone will be able to take bits and pieces home with them after this. Yeah, I um I think that one of the the huge things is the storytelling. Like I love to see how this story unfolds Carol, such a young woman. All of these people were so young when they started out with this and they made such meaningful music with meaningful lyrics that clearly we see are lasting a lifetime not like some of the music i won't say that but you know it lasts a lifetime and to see um this love story and then this business love story and then the these side relationship stories um come together i think it was very well written and i think that people one they're gonna love the music they're gonna want to hear the music that they listened to growing up. Um, it's gonna touch them and move them in a certain kind of way. I've seen audiences explode just from even tearing up listening to some of the music because it brings back memories. That's just what music does to all of us as humans. And so I like the fact that they wrote it um, with different categories of things going on, but they bring it together so well to tell this amazing story about this couple, these two couples really. and. Um, take us on the journey of when we were just at home listening to it, maybe now we get to go back behind the screen and say, oh my God, this was going on. Oh my God, this was going on. Some mm -hmm. of it came out, but it came out later, but just to see it come together from the beginning um, in the privacy and the intimacy moments, I think the audience is really gonna enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said this to Ashley, maybe yesterday. My favorite part of being in the show is getting to watch everyone else in the show. Um, <laughs> Cynthia has a couple of moments where like she's just sitting and watching other people perform. I get to watch Ashley sing and I get to watch Matt sing. I get to watch Anaya sing the heck out of Uptown. And being on stage for those moments, you know, I'm Cynthia watching them technically, but like I just get to like enjoy and support. And I feel like even when I'm backstage, I'm like changing as fast as I can. So I can watch Khadija sing and I can watch the locomotion and I can like, I'm not interested in like not being a part of those moments, which right. is like, I think one of the best things about being in the audience 
is you experience all of those moments with them. And then like at the end, you get to stand up and sing with us. Like that's the best part. Yesterday yeah. we had some awesome audience members singing with us and dancing. <laughs> and it's just an amazing experience. Yeah. Khadija, let me ask you, because because you sort of broached a point about the type of music that was created that that's that, that holds the test of time. And I think that was interesting. You, you kind of you were gonna go there and you stopped yourself, but I'm gonna make you go there because you know, I was thinking when I saw this show, you know, going back to the I mean, this was the late 50s, early 60s, and the producers again controlled everything that we heard, and, the, and these were perfectly written pop songs tailor-made for a specific audience. Right. But in a very short amount of time, we saw all of that change where the singer songwriter and the people who were making writing the music and making the music actually got to turn around and and perform the music. And it's it's like people wanted a sense of authenticity. People wanted some realness. Yeah. Can't really think. I, I mean, so so I'm, you know, I was born in the 80s. And so I can't think of a time I've been alive in the 90s, 2000s, you know, and what have you. Another time where things changed so quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. I, I just I just can't think of that. And and so this was to me, I, I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you can put some insight in on that. But but to me, this was just a very unique time where we saw so much change. Mm -hmm. so much I think that the background of music first changed um, because you can see, um, if you know, when you come to see the show, you can see that um, Donnie was very interested in a certain sound, um, a certain presentation of music. Yes, he wanted money. Yes, he wanted things to make um, to that was going to be a hit. But he also had a huge interest in what the people wanted. I think the music industry on the whole has just shifted to just money and just business about money. So I'm finding that the lyrics and the song, even going from playing live instrument music, like you'll see a, a, a portion um, in the in the in the show where you know they're picking up real guitars where they are playing out this music, and now we're on the computer dapping out beats. It's a different vibration. <laughs> it's a different feel. And then the consciousness of these generations that came up after, like you say, the, the late 80s going into the 90s and 2000s, it's just the trajectory of the storytelling changed completely. Um, it was, it's not about real life, really. Some of it is, I won't say all music, but because I think country music kind of stays in this space where they're telling heartfelt stories about real life. Um, but for the most part, I just feel like it became a money thing. I be, the executive producers, the people behind the scene were grabbing people that didn't really have talent, that couldn't really play instruments, that couldn't really sing. Um, and it just, it just changed how music feels. And, um, I I don't I hopefully we get back to real me. Well, maybe we are. I mean, I mean, with, with that YouTube and first. podcasting, I, I I know that Ashley, I know you have a podcast that I've seen on your website, uh, and so with so the, the the barrier to entry now to be creative and to find yeah. an audience is is lower now than what it used to be, and so maybe we're getting back to that sense of realness. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe everything they say everything's cyclical, but 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 I I appreciate that insight. Last question, um, what just what do you want our audience to know about what you've what you've made here? And again, I'll throw that out to all three of you. Anybody. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Um, so I think that um, Jack Quez um, did a good job. I watched him in the room taking time out with each person, but especially the main four characters to develop their story so that um, it was an inside feeling versus an outside feeling, meaning inside the body versus outside the body. And I would like for the audience to really walk away with a deep understanding about what Carol sacrificed to give them something that they could have forever. Um, it wasn't easy for her. She was very young. The journey and the things that she was going through behind the scenes was um, tumultuous for her as um, a woman, 
Um, and I think that if they, under, I think that when they walk away, just to, to wrap it up, I think that when they walk away, I would like for them to have a great appreciation for the sacrifice that um, they all made, but definitely Carol made um, because she's so sweet. I mean, my God, you're just in <laughs> tears um, when you see how she's trying to handle her. And I don't want to give it away, but how she's trying to handle all of these things. So I just want the audience to walk away with an even high, higher level of appreciation, not just for the music, but for her as a person to see what family is really like, show what love, real love is really like. She didn't have any resentments at the end. It just is something that I hope that can uplift people because again, we really need it right now uh, in, you know, the things that we're going through in, in our world. Um, so I think that it'll be something that will really give people hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well said. And humanity. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On that. Um, honestly, to add to what Khadija was saying, I also think that if you want to get even more specific i think being a woman and doing this show carol's story is like so so important to see her art and and coming into her own her own creative self into her womanhood into her confidence um i'll get too emotional if i talk about it for too long but um it's it's really really important especially in today's time um, she is a mover and shaker in this world. Um, and I think people forget that. And yeah. the show is a nice reminder of that. Touché. Yeah, Cynthia is actually um, was interviewed and she was like, there were no female composers. Like there just weren't. And that's why Cynthia has a line. Um, yeah, I think our first scene where I'm like, you're a composer, you're a girl. Like that didn't happen. And she just kind of was like, I mean, Cynthia and Carol are very similar, but also very different. But the one thing they have in common is that they're just women trying to break in, you know, they're trying to get the chance. And Donnie gives them that chance, which I'll give him credit for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He did that. <laughs> Yeah, now this this show is 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 a lot of uh, emotionally. It's up, it's down, and 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 Donnie, like Donnie is there and gives them the chance. He also provides some some good comic relief when when it's needed most. And of course, we we see Carol go through. I mean, by the end of the show, I mean she could be out and bitter, uh, but thank God we see Carol playing the piano and, and getting the house up on their feet. Right. Yeah, you know, thank God we have that because uh, it, it just really round rounded out a uh, uh, wonderful production and ladies thank you so much for for coming back to Fredericksburg being a part of our community and and doing this show for us and and uh, we just can't say thank you enough thank yeah, you thanks for having thank us you. Thanks. <laughs> all right have a great day and we'll talk uh, when, when you come see us again all right, thank you, you. Thank you. Take care. See later bye bye